Um, my name is Rachel Yohei, and I'm 23, and I'm a PhD student at the University of Virginia working on CMS. Hi, Rachel. Thanks for agreeing to talk to the readers of the CMS Times. Um, so what does your work at, uh, on the CMS project at CERN involve? Um, we're working on the, the end caps, the ECAL end caps of the, um, of the, the calorimeter. And uh, so basically, UVA's contribution is um, an LED stability and calibration system for, for the, uh, the end caps. And if you look over here, um, this, is, uh, this box is a piece of our um, control and DAC um, for, the, for the LED pulsar system. So you can see all the hardware that we work on. And how long have you been working on this project? Um, this particular project since June. And have you worked on another project? Um, before that, we were getting, um, actually UVA is one of the, it's maybe one of two institutions in all of CMS that has access to a four Tesla magnet. And so um, we were actually setting up um, our four Tesla magnet and running studies of our photo detectors, um, sort of as like an on the bench sort of thing. Uh, to, to learn more about them, um, as opposed to being in point five, where there's a lot of other things going on, and you can't always do what you want when you want. So how long have you been here? Um, I've been here since June, and um, I was here last in summer of 2007. And in 2007, you were working on? I was working on the H4 test beam, where we put about 500 NCAT crystals into the beam line and studied them. And does this relate to your PhD st studies? Uh, yeah, this is all for PhD studies. Okay. And what was your undergrad? Stu what were your undergrad studies in? Um, in physics as well. Um, I did I did one summer of research in uh, in something unrelated to particle physics, and then the next summer I worked on the CMS tracker. And were you a part of University of Virginia at that time? No, I did my undergrad work at Caltech. Um, so, what are the most interesting parts of working on the ECAL? Um, I would say that um, working on the NCAPS is really interesting because it's it's one of the last pieces of the puzzle, and we have specific challenges that have to be met. For instance, um, our photo detectors um, have certain features <laughs> that have to be understood scientifically, and it's not completely clear what's going on. And so, there's a lot of like measurements to be made and work to be done. Um, and so we actually, you know, you really feel like you're doing science. <laughs> so is it quite technical as well as looking at a computer as well? Definitely, yeah. So can you describe um, uh, an average day? Um, yeah, so basically um, either I would be working here on um, the control software for our LED pulsar system, um, which involves sort of being on a computer, but having the computer talk to electronics, and so it involves electronics and the computer. Um, or I would be back in the office, um, logged into AFS, working on CMSSW, working on maybe some kind of calibration exercise. So try to split my time between hardware and software. Okay. And you mentioned going down into the cavern. Um, yes. Yeah, so last um, last July. And, and August, when we were in a rush to install the um, the ECAL end caps, um, myself and my colleague Sasha Ladovskoy, we were in charge of installing our um, our LED pulsar system, and so we were basically down there, practically living down there. It felt like at least um, installing, kind of on our hands and knees, um, cabling things and making sure the whole system worked from start to finish. So, have you had any proud moments or best or worst moments? I would say that our, my proudest moment is seeing that system working, um, which was it, it was it was not trivial, and we discovered a lot of problems along the way, but we were able to fix them, and then to see it working was really great. And what part does this play in the whole experiment? Um, well, basically, um, it is it is a light. Um, pulsing system, so it acts for calibration of the crystals um, alongside the laser system that's already been developed, and it also um, acts to uh, load our photo detectors with light, um, which serves, which is hopefully serves to stabilize them. Um, and are you enjoying being at CERN and in Geneva in general? Yes, I really like being at CERN and in Geneva. It's a lot of fun here. I is think it's Gene beautiful. <laughs> is Geneva quite different to your hometown in Virginia? Um, well, I'm actually, I'm not from Virginia, okay. I'm from Long Island, New York, but uh -huh. um, it's different than both. <laughs> uh -huh. And is it different to where the University of Virginia is? Yeah, it's definitely different because UVA is in like a small 
college town in the middle of Virginia and sort of surrounded by a rural area. And this is like, well, I would say this is this is surrounded by a rural area, but it's sort of like a big city in the middle of that. So um, it is definitely different. There are mountains here you can ski on, and uh, there are. It's very cosmopolitan, it's very international, there's tons of people from all around the world, um, you know, lots of stuff like that. So if you had to learn French? I unfortunately managed to get by without it. I, 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 can, I can talk to the people at the grocery store, <laughs> but here at CERN you can basically get by just speaking English, and so unfortunately that's what most of us do. <laughs> so there are quite a few other American students here? Yeah, there are a ton of American students here. It's actually kind of fun. And what kind of things would you get up to together? Um, we cook together, we go out together, we, you know, make fun of the French together. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do we do lots of things. Um, uh, when I get a little time, um, sometimes we like to travel because you know we haven't been to different places around Europe. Mm. So, where's been your favorite place so far? Um, let me think. Well, this, okay, this past summer, me and some of my girlfriends went, we took a road trip to Nice on the mm -hmm. Mediterranean coast, and that was really fun. It was beautiful. Just when it was still kind of cold and rainy here in, in Geneva, it was beautiful weather there, so we got to go swimming and all that. So do you think you'll be working on the CMS experiment and at CERN for, for a, a longer time? Um, definitely until the end of my PhD and beyond that, if they'll have me. <laughs> And where do you see yourself in 10, 20 years? Um, well, academia would be would be nice again if I if I can if I can make the cut. And um, if not, I definitely like to stay in something scientific, physics related. And uh, actually, I'm have given a little bit of thought to like outreach type stuff. Although we'll see. <laughs> and what do your friends and family back in America think to you being at CERN? Um, they're definitely pretty excited about it. Like I was talking to a friend of mine from high school who I hadn't seen in a while, and she asked me what I was doing now, and I said, oh, have you heard of the LHC? And she's like, oh my god, that's you? I can't believe it. And so I think they're, they're pretty happy. Is there anything else you'd like to add, um, maybe some words of encouragement to younger students who are studying physics? Um, I mean, if you're interested in this, you should definitely... Um, do some research and try to get to come out here and see the experiment for yourself and get the hands-on experience. And then if you're if you're serious about it, then that, that'll make you love it. And so. And how did you get yourself out here? How did I? Well, I basically, I volunteered for the project of designing the control software for this, for this um, LED pulsar system. And basically all the expertise was here. And so I said I would come out and bang on the relevant doors and meet the right people and like get them to help me and get this all started. So that's how I got out here. And has it met all of your expectations? Um, pretty much. I think so. It's definitely been, you know, challenging, but you learn a lot and all sorts of stuff like that. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, things are good here. Looking forward to data. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel.